राधे राधे सर राधे राधे सर और कैसे हैं बढ़िया है सर बढ़िया है सर Are the slides visible? Can someone acknowledge, please? Yes, sir. 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 further excellence in research teaching and learning process and uh, i'm i'm sure this session will uh, have lot of uh, utility for all the faculty members for all the researchers and the research supervisors in terms of enhancing the excellence and uh, fortunately or unfortunately in last few years all of us have witnessed Uh, uh extreme conditions of uh, health emergency through uh, that covid pand pandemic uh, for about two years we had been compelled to start using ict switch from offline mode to online mode whether the system was prepared for it or not the external conditions imposed that so we all had been using ict so we had seen the uh, potential that ict offers for uh, solving the problem um, the problem was you know people can't uh, stay in physical contact or physical proximity so social distancing this that all we are aware but the point that we are trying to discuss is we have seen the power of ict in helping us solve problems so that's basically the um, uh, importance here that ict alone can't do anything but when ict is used along with few other contributing factors then it can help us to solve the problem so in fact for excellence there are three uh, parameters or three pillars one of them is the technology that we are uh, discussing this information and communication technology the other two pillars are the people and the process so if we bring the best of the technology but we do not uh, uh, do the uh, enhancement of the skill of the people or we don't have the processes uh, properly uh, aligned to use ict or use technology then we don't see the result so it's like a three wheeler in in a, any three wheeler all the three wheels have to have proper air and proper conditions then only the vehicle will move one one of the wheel has got you know excellent uh, condition the other two wheels are you know malfunctioning then the vehicle will not move so ict or the technology side is just one of the three pillars so that's what uh, the we are going to talk about in this session but before we get into the discussion let me ask the participants uh, 
uh, all the faculty members for a couple of minutes i would request all of you to please because this session has got to be an interactive session it can't be one way lecturing because ultimately uh, the key takeaways will be from the session would be to uh, how do we use more ICT than we had been using prior to this session. That is the objective. That means at the end of this session, each and every participant should have something to take away and implement in his uh, college, in his institute, in his, uh, you know, teaching, learning and research process. That's what the objective does of this session is. So before we uh, start uh, running the slides, I would like all the participants. So kindly specify what kind of problems are there because I, ICT is a solution enabler. It helps us to solve the problems to some extent if we use the technology. So before we, why I'm asking this is because if we have the problems listed right now, then at the end of the session, we can look back and see whether do we have some solution to those problems that we are had flagged at the beginning of the session. That will be a true measure of seeing, you know, how this session is really useful for the participant. So let me uh, request all the participants to kindly mention the problems, but in the ch chat box, not orally, mention in the chat box so that others can also see and any problem which, ha which has been uh, specified by somebody, we don't have to repeat it. Repeat it. We have to mention some new uh, item because the same problem may be faced by 20, 30 faculty members. So we don't have to repeat it 30 times. So I would request all the participants to please use the chat box and mention the problems that you see, problems from your eyes as faculty members, as a key stakeholder in, the, in your respective institutions. There are some problems, right? We are living in a world of problems. There will be problems. But if we can take non-trivial problems and try to find pragmatic solutions, then it will, in, uh, and in that solution, how ICT can help us and uh, to re reduce the problem or solve the problem completely or minimize the chances of occurrence of the problem. So le let's uh, discuss this. So I would request all the participants to mention, please, and then we will start running this slides. Okay. So please go ahead and uh, give us the. Uh, Students are not coming regularly in the class. Absolutely true. Digital divide among the students. Very nice. Some students are uh, technology savvy. They can use digital resources. Others, then the problem is lack of resources and infrastructure at both ends. I'm assuming you are saying at the institution end as well as at the student end. Digital awareness. Then rural areas difficult to implement. Excellent. Sources of ICT are not available in the institute. Okay. Sometimes we provide notes in digital mode, but the students don't even look into them. Excellent. We will discuss all, and, and I'm I'm very very confident that by the end of this session, you will have some pragmatic solution to take away and implement. Networks, internet is not available in the college, resource problem. Don't have enough time to cover the syllabus. Rural, urban divide, digital divide. Wi-Fi doesn't work in the university. Doesn't work better in the university. Dr. Sarita. Okay, cool. Sometimes they miss out deep learning. ICT is fun, but in-depth learning can be missed at times. Source is very limited. Okay, students are not allowed to use mobile phones in the class, so we cannot uh, have two-way communication to engage students with the latest tools in AI. Use of excessive social media making them less knowledgeable by, by the students. Some of the students don't even have a smartphone to access e-resources. Okay, excellent. So, uh, very good. Uh, I want to, if I want to show an online lecture, students might say, please send the link and we will watch later at home. And they, they may watch, they may not watch. That's true. Students take admission only for degree, not for knowledge. Right. Uh, 
excellent publications don't help their students and uh, teachers criteria is publications very very uh, relevant comment uh, or the sharing of the students are not interested to attend classes administrative work in college is more <laughs> we have only one smart class okay cool so uh, i i guess uh, uh, the students google everything and they know that they are not in practice or reading books resulting into absolutely there are in fact there are uh, these comments are very very relevant financially weak students very true see uh, so we will we will have answer to most of these questions in our session so i can uh, assure you that these problems are uh, addressable if we obviously it requires the effort commitment at the level of institution at the level of individual faculty members and motivation and a strong support from the top leadership teams of the respective institution to improve the system right but all problems are uh, with the use of ICT, we can solve these problems to a large extent. And uh, we will not only talk, we will also show the resources that you can use, that we can use to solve the problems. Fine, excellent, very nice. So let's, uh, uh, lack of resources in the individual institutions rural students, distractions, as well as lack of interaction. Right. We have electricity problem. We have uh, complete the syllabus by hook or crook. Yeah, I, I do understand and appreciate uh, all these problems. But uh, believe me, all of these can be solved if we take a proactive approach and blend it with ICT. And, and how that's the object of this session. So let's get back to the discussion on the slides and uh, uh, allow me to uh, share my slides again, and then we'll start the discussion. Most students syllabus is in English, they prefer in Hindi. Okay. I mean, the localization of the syllabus and content, etc. Yeah, I understand. The administrative preference of the college is admin work. Uh, yeah, these are all some of the, I would say, governance issues. Uh, but let's, uh, even for governance, ICT can definitely help reduce the problem. So let's let's get into the discussion on through the slides, and we will address these problems. Are the slides visible again? No, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, 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 sir. Excellent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's, let's take the discussion forward. Yes, sir. So basically, as uh, many of the participants mentioned also, um, that we have shortage of resources. It's a harsh reality. And it's a reality of practical world. In a practical world, resources will be always limited. We have to apportion those resources appropriately uh, so as to you know manage with the constrained resources and still produce results. So in developing uh, countries, shortage of resources is very, very common. And this is basically from a study which was slightly old, but today this scenario may not be much different. That in developing nations, Around 2.5 billion people earn less than $2 a day. The infrastructure is either inadequate or unavailable. So technologies meant to overcome these deprivations are often either unknown or untested or not deployed in the developing world. This is the harsh reality. So in fact, Understanding the constraints, understanding the challenges, understanding the limitations. Let's see how the ICT can help us to minimize the constraints and enhance the, you know, efficiency. Now, ICT 
should not be looked at cure for all the problems. In fact, ICT alone can't solve any problem, but it can definitely act as a catalyzer for the solution, right? So it is a powerful tool to facilitate and enable affordable solutions for all the four parameters, infrastructure development, basic development, economic development, as well as empowerment. So basically, the what we are, the unfortunate part is ICT is there, but the appropriate ICT tailored to the needs of the different countries, localization, etc., is still not very uh, widely available at the ground level. As many of the participants mentioned also, rural areas, we have power, so many other issues. And that is where the government government's role comes into play to build the infrastructure. And even government is also using ICT. So that's, you might have heard of Digital India as a project, right? So in Digital India, uh, the government has taken up huge initiatives for addressing the infrastructure related issues for solution enabling through ICT. Now, coming to uh, our discussion for uh, uh, what do you call uh, how development is happen happening in the field of ICT itself. So, what is happening is the research that is happening is on the bandwidth, on the computational speed, on the storage, etc., etc. But this may be the object of research for the technology people. But what happens to the common man? How the common man is getting benefited? For that, basically, there are successful applications that have emerged, but they are still largely untapped for sub sustainable development. And that is why so many funding agencies are funding projects for localization, for customization, for multilingualization, etc., for so many resources. So what I'm trying to say here is government is taking a lot of initiatives in, in under the banner of Digital India. What institutions and what the uh, what the researchers have to do is to utilize those facilities for taking a project and being part of the journey to reduce the issues, reduce the problems, develop the infrastructure, develop customized solutions tailored to the needs of India, tailored to the needs of our own area, tailored to the needs of the region, etc. So basically, how is it that we, uh, uh, it can help us in teaching, learning and research? Now, as far as uh, use of teaching aid and and the tools and techniques for teaching learning is concerned you might have heard of a study called cone of experience anything that we read we tend to forget it so 10 10 studies have shown that 10 percent of what is read will be remembered or will be retained but if we also hear it then we can if we instead of reading, we are hearing, then the retention level is higher. And if we also visualize it by seeing the objects, the pictures, then we, the retention level is still higher. So typically in the traditional methodology, only reading was there. So that was 10% of the retention was possible. The emphasis was on memorization. Emphasis was on chalk and talk. So then there are broadcasts, audio books, and so many other methods through which the, the, in the teaching learning process, apart from reading, even the hearing sense is also being utilized. So in fact, if we not only read but also hear and see then the level of retention is going to be much much higher that is what the object of the 21st century teaching learning process is so understand that higher levels of retention can be achieved through active involvement in the learning process right so this is the fundamental on the basis of which the ict resources 
the central digital resources or various digital resources are evolving based on this cone of experience. That is, uh, uh, we are getting more teaching aids now than we used to have previously. Now, teaching aids is not something new. Teaching aid is very, very old concept. It used to be there when we were students all, right? But that time, teaching aid was overhead projectors, right? But now we have so many other things. We have a smart classroom. We have digital, uh, you know, uh, whiteboard. We have so many other teaching aids. Now, it, it, strictly speaking, teaching aids reinforce what teachers are saying. Ensure, help us ensure that the teacher's point is understood. Signal what is important, what is essentials. Enable students to visualize or experience something that is impractical to see or do in real life. On this point, I would like to take an example. Imagine that there is a geography teacher. He or she has to explain the concept of galaxy to his or her student. So what she'll do in a traditional methodology, she will uh, draw a diagram, a two dimensional diagram of the galaxy on the blackboard or whiteboard or green board, whatever be. So this board itself is two dimensional. So she will take 10, 20 minutes for drawing that diagram. And that diagram, galaxy is three dimensional, but the diagram can be only two dimensional on the whiteboard or on the blackboard. So she will draw that diagram students for 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, whatever be the time, because galaxy is a complex diagram. And then she will explain. It will take an effort of 20, 30 minutes for students to understand and get a hazy picture of the uh, um, galaxy, what galaxy means, if assuming that uh, it's being taught to them for the first time. This is one, one traditional methodology. On the other hand, and it is not practical for students to see the galaxy from the, uh, from the naked eyes. On the other hand, Today, it is quite possible to visualize Galaxy by a small YouTube video of two minutes or three minutes, along with audio, along with, you know, animations embedded in it, that within two to three minutes, if that video is run in the class, and then questions are asked. So in, in five minutes, the level of learning about and conceptual clarity about Galaxy will be much better as compared to the traditional method. And it is possible them it's possible for the students to get a crystal clear concept. So that is what enables the students to visualize and experience something that is impractical to see or do in the real life. And engage the students' other senses. So it's not only reading, but hearing by watching. All these senses are being engaged in the learning process. And it is a different style of learning. It facilitates different style of learning. So teaching aids of 21st century are much more powerful and that is what they need to be utilized. So keeping that in mind, a lot of projects have been undertaken by the ministry, erstwhile ministry of HRD, now called ministry of education. And a number of mission mode projects have been funded by the governments, respective governments and uh, presently under the banner of Digital India. All of them have been pulled together in a, in, under an umbrella called Digital India. So understand that a lot of changes are happening. Changes are happening in the teaching learning environment. In the traditional model, the uh, focus for teaching learning was on the teachers. And the role of learner was passive. And the technology was talk and talk. So if a student missed the class of Guruji, he is gone because all the knowledge was with Guruji only, the teacher. And if a student missed out for some reason, then he, he will come back next year because this session will happen next year by the same teacher in the next session. So he, the role of learner was passive. And chalk and talk is the model. So after the class, the it'll the whatever is written in the blackboard will be removed, and the next teacher will arrive. And uh, so that's the only possibility was to see 
what is written in the board at that point in time and gone. That was the traditional model. But then the changes happened and changing, it is changing from traditional model to information model. So in an information model, the focus is not on the teacher, but focus is on the learners and the role of learner from passive to active. And here a PC is there. So personal computer also is required. So technology, which means if if the teacher's lecture is recorded, then in the personal computer, that lecture can be played two times, three times. And a student will take an active role instead of teacher. So understand that this was the first transition, traditional to information. But unfortunately, as some of the participants very rightly mentioned in the during the initial part of the discussion, in any class, some students will be very, very good. 10%, 15%, something like that, isn't it? Above average students. Some st students will be really poor. Might be 20%, 25%, 10%, depends on the individual class. And then the large chunk of students, maybe 40, 50, 60%, they will be average students, isn't it? Am I correct? Please mention your own uh, analysis, the participants. Is that yes. true? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Okay. So if that, which means that the same level of learning, same level of solution cannot work for all the three categories of the student, isn't it? That is how the transition is happening from information model to knowledge model, where there are groups, which means there is a group of very good students, there is a group of average students, there is a group of below average students within the same class. So the same kind of medicine is not possible for all the three groups. So for each group, there must be the adaptive learning. That is what the role of learner. So role of learner in the traditional model was passive, in the information model was active, and in the knowledge model is adaptive. So here, not only the PC, but also the network is required. Network means connectivity. So understand that apart from PC, there is a need to connect to the national digital resources and international digital resources that can help enable adaptive learning. Obviously, the, the one teacher who's, who's thoroughly loaded with so many administrative work, so many other things as many of the participants were mentioning. So what government has done, what, what the rest of the world has done, they have created plenty of digital resources which need to be blended into our curriculum and you to be used smartly to enable adaptive learning into the process itself so that the student's customized need can be fulfilled. That is what the changes which are happening through use of ICT into the teaching learning process. Then how the role of teacher is changing. In the traditional model, Guruji was the transmitter of knowledge. So if you are if you miss the class of Guruji, you are gone. But it is changing to guide and facilitator of knowledge. So in 21st century, the teachers instead of transmitter of knowledge are becoming the guide and facilitator of knowledge. Earlier, it was controller of learning. If you don't attend my class, you are gone. So I will control whether you can learn or not. That was the thought process for Guruji. Now, Guruji is our creator of learning environment rather than controller of learning, right? In the traditional model, if the Guruji is not able to answer a question, then it's, uh, it's considered, you know, very bad because Guruji was supposed to be always the expert. That was history. So teacher's role is changing from always the expert to collaborator and co-learner. That is what is happening because every teacher is a student also. Continuous learning process is on. So 
teacher is also collaborating in co-learning using those national and international digital resources that we will talk about and demonstrate during this very session itself. So we will look at some of those resources and how they are useful and, and they, how they can be usable in our own teaching, learning and research process. We will look into it in this very session itself. So learning to use ICT, the role is changing from using ICT to enhance learning, right? So uh, um, some of the participants mentioned in the beginning, you know, that there is a lot of gap. So on the job training is the one of the best and most effective form of training. So everybody is learning and uh, situations like COVID pandemic forced us to learn at an unprecedented pace, at an unprecedented demand. Uh, so basically using ICT to enhance learning is the focus. We don't want to be pundit of ICT. We, if we are pundit of our own subject, that's good enough. But we should be smartly learning how to use ICT to enhance our learning in our own subject, right? So the uh, and the uh, uh, learning process is from didactive to interactive, exper experimental, and exploratory. That's the transformation which is happening in the role of teachers how the curriculum is changing and how the delivery methodology is changing in the traditional model it was memorizing facts we all know but in the current scenario memorizing facts is not possible because dr google is there so the questions should be re rephrased questions should never be now memory based it should be inquiry based for example when was Gandhiji born? This kind of a question, anybody can Google and find. And if we judge on that, we don't really know the learning. So it could be instead of asking the, I'm just giving an example. Please, uh, you can think of your own examples in your own subject. Instead of asking question, when was Gandhiji born? We should ask question, if Gandhiji was alive today, what he would be doing today? So the, this no Google can find. So a student is compelled to think. It should be inquiry based. <laughs> so something like that. So please understand, we have to transform our curriculum, our assessment methodology. Instead of artificial teaching, learning, exercise, I, I, you can have similar example. Instead of asking theoretical questions, if I take another example, let's say computer network somebody is teaching. So instead of giving hypothetical questions, we should say that the, the building that you are sitting and right now and giving the examination, if you have to design a network for this building, what will be your design? Please do so. So he will be forced to think. He will be forced to apply his knowledge because application is knowledge what is needed in the industry. It is not merely knowledge, but it is the Use of knowledge to solve real world problems is what is being looked at by the from responsible nationals, from responsible citizens, from responsible employees. So basically, that kind of questions should be. And those in that cheating is not possible. Everybody will think everybody and the real. Uh, so that's how we should be instead of authentic artificial teaching exercises we should have authentic authentic learning and then when different students are designing the network or having different answers then that can be discussed and the in the collective wisdom can be pooled and then we can have you know the real learning process so instead of having rigid delivery fixed time and space we can have open and flexible delivery anytime anywhere which means I should have a platform where I should be able to post these discussions. Let everybody answer, respond, discussion forums. All of that are possible. And we have implemented this in AMU through a, a solution called LMS or learning management system. That, And I'm sure many of the participants institute might also have that kind of system, which is called uh, there are many LMS solutions. Learning management system is a one-stop solution for the teachers and learners where you students will log in, teacher will log in. Suppose some student misses class, he can log into the LMS portal 
and see what was the discussion, what are the assignments, and it can all happen paperlessly. All of that is possible, and we have implemented that, and we will demonstrate this in this session. So, single path progression to multi-path progression, that is what is also happening, right? And the uh, media applications from single sense stimulation to multi-sensory stimulation. We take the example. Instead of just drawing the diagram of a galaxy, we can look at the small YouTube video of galaxy and multiple sense get stimulated and learning is enhanced. Single media to multimedia, delivery of information to exchange of information. Students can exchange the information. And then those ex the learnings arrived out of those the exchange of information can be become the part of the le learning portal that can be looked at by all the students at any time by logging in and all. And teacher can monitor who logged in when, what he did, what he did not do, etc. So customized adaptive learning is possible through such solutions. So monologue communication has to change to dialogue and analog resources into digital resources. That is what is happening in the applications media. Now, with this, let us look at some of the national digital resources that has been made available by government of India through various funded projects. And these national digital resources are accessible to all the teachers, all the students. So how we can use them? There is one resource called, please make a note, we will also demonstrate these resources. Sakshat.ac.in. This is actually a Sakshat portal. That's a fantastic digital resource that started in 2006. The, it, this portal was inaugurated by the then president, Dr. Kalam, in because education was very close to his heart. So he launched this portal in 2006. Since then, this portal has grown a lot. A lot of content have come. So Sakshat portal, you are, I would request all the participants to have a look at Sakshat portal. Find out appropriate resources, use them, and encourage your respective students to use these national digital resources that are available across the length and breadth of India. And all students can use these resources. Then we have another national digital resources called NPTEL. Sir, sir Sakshat is for a scholarship. Uh... <laughs> No, no, it has got so many things. We will, we will, we will demonstrate. Don't worry. It has got so many digital resources for learning, for enhancing the learning, right? So we will look. A, a portal a scholarship would be just one of them. There are so many other things. So then we have NPTEL.ac, National Program on Technology Enabled Learning. Now, how? How the NPTEL started, the background is, in India, we have very few premier institutions like IITs, right? How many students appear in IITs? Any idea? Only 4,000. Huh? Any participant has any idea on how many students take up the exam for uh, IIT admissions? No, sir. Five huh? lakh student. Okay. So lakhs, lakhs of students appear. And how many of them uh, get admission? 10 to 12,000 students. Okay. 10,000. So uh, can somebody calculate percentage for me? What percentage of applicants are able to get admission in IIT? There must be some maths teacher also in this uh, session. I hope. Approximately 1%. 1%. Okay. So, so let, 1%. Uh, for the pur purpose of this discussion, let us assume 1% or less than 1%, whatever. So 99% of the students, if I take it the other way, 99% of the aspirants of IIT do not get admission in IIT. Right? So this was a concern for the governments, obviously, education is a government uh, responsibility. And building educational institution is a huge, lengthy, complicated, fund-consuming process. To build an institution is not an easy task. 
so government privatized the education so private universities private colleges private institutions also came to cope up with the demand right but the private colleges are not funded so they have their own break even issues right they have higher fee they have challenge of getting all the seats filled and there so many other issues so they say that you know we will go by only what we can afford we will not we can't compete with these uh, institutions which are funded by the government and uh, then uh, because they they are the government gives fund and uh, we don't get fund so so the real challenge is hiring of good quality of teachers right and because of the unemployment scenario you know they may uh, higher teachers are the very low pay and all of those ch practical challenges that you may be aware of so as a result who is the loser actually the loser is the students who are studying in those institutions isn't it because ultimately they may get good marks because the management of those colleges may not, may not like to be you know lose the seats so they will say we lenient we give them good marks give them a grade this and as a result what is happening is they may have very good marks and very little knowledge and skills so when they go to the market the market will not absorb them because they are they are containing a piece of paper called degree they are having possessing that piece of paper but they are not possessing the knowledge and the skills this is a huge problem so to help reduce this problem government funded a project called nptel national program and technology enabled learning and then in that process all the lectures being delivered in iits were video recorded and put on this portal and said fine you can't get admission in iit but you can get the lectures of iit so use this these lectures to upgrade your skills right so this nptel.ac.in has real lectures of iits and premier institutions and this lectures can be used by the teachers of those uh, non iits or the colleges so it's a very fantastic resource for the good quality content but then uh, uh, the uh, so apart from that they were converted into pdf files and pdf are downloadable and then they can do most of the libraries can buy the nptel videos put it on their library computers without requiring any internet connection they can be viewed etc etc they are not for making money with very nominal charges those are all available to all the libraries so these digital resources can definitely help in enhance the learning good quality content etc etc so that's how the np then the another problem another problem same problem actually there are so many courses where laboratories are required laboratory again is a challenge it requires equipment and equipment requires investment and the investment the management of the college says we don't have funds so we cannot do that investment so how ultimate sufferers are the students so to minimize their suffering government funded another project called virtual labs which means and we will also look at this site and i would request all the participants to please browse all these websites in your leisure time plenty of national digital resources that can be utilized by all the participants and the students of the respective participants for enhancing their learning and reducing minimizing those problems that we discussed in the beginning so virtual lab can be used because let's say there is a college there is a weak student coming back again to the adaptive learning the the knowledge model the student may have uh, uh, may be weak may be from a weak background from rural area from he is not able to understand the lab experiment in one hour that is allocated by the college and gone next week next lab next third week third lab and then this poor fellow copies from here and there submits his report he gets marks but he doesn't learn he does not understand because behind every lab there is a learning objective paper report marks are the by product the main product is the learning and reinforcements of the concept that is 
aimed at through that particular experiment right so ultimately the loser is the student so in order for him or her to overcome the impediments in the learning process the virtual labs are available all that is needed is a small computer or a smartphone and a connectivity to connect to this virtual lab which is running 24 by 7 and perform the experiments virtually and overcome the impediments in his or her learning process during the weekends during the summer vacation winter vacation the lab staff can also do these experiments if the lab is staff there is no there is hardly any defined process in many institutions for enhancing the skills of the lab staff right so what happens the lab staff knows something but whatever he knew 10 years back he knows that only today also so his or her skill are not getting upgraded and when a student asks questions they shout back because they are scared that if we go to the perform the experiment maybe there will be some error and a student will laugh at me so in instead of helping his students learning enhancement the lab staff if he is not knowledgeable he will shout back so that no more questions so this is actually a very problematic situation because those lab staff are also key stakeholders even they can use this v lab to enhance their own learning and conceptual clarity so that they can become the real mentor so these are all some of the problems that the through national digital resources it can be solved then there is uh, you might have heard of inflipnet.ac.in here we have epg patshala here also a lot of digital resources they are other than iits but including iits also and aict and etc etc so lot of epg patshala national digital resources are available that we will look into in a short while apart from that there is a swayam portal that you might be aware of which is swayam.gov.in is the website there are two kind of accounts possible on swayam one is the learner account the other is a teacher or trainer account or whatever you call i would request all the participants in this uh, session to create a learner account in swayam portal for your own self for creating account only an email id and a mobile number is needed it's free so register as a learner explore what all kind of courses are available identify some courses relevant to your students give it to them as a home assignment ask them to also register as learner and do these courses there are two kind of courses one are called self-paced learning courses they are they can be learned at their own pace the others are called scheduled courses and there is a ugc credit framework that ugc has approved so some of the courses can be offered from swam portal as per the approval in the respective institute so each institution would have some you know policy guidelines some academic council uh, mandate etc in that process swam courses can also be included to certain extent based on the approval of the respective institutions apart from that we have another national digital resource called swamprabha.gov.in this is actually a dish tv direct to home tv so what at this can be installed in the common room in the lobby in the appropriate places in the institution where the students can sit and watch the educational program during their free time there is a schedule available it has got plenty of educational resources being aired so it can be watched by the students it can be watched by the staff and it can be referred and it very very nice resources are available swamprabha.gov.in and the cost is very minimal i think something like 2000 rupees or so so this is basically not aimed, aimed at making money but aimed at empowering education so empowering the nationals so please use these national digital resources to address the problems apart from that we have national digital library so most of the libraries of the institutions are have become part of the national digital library so if in a physical world our student can access only the material available in our own library the book etc but in through ndl 
the book or the resources digitally available in the ndl can be accessed so it will enhance the availability minimize the shortage of resources for all the students now how to do it i would request kindly contact your own librarian in your respective institute ask them that i are we part of an uh, national digital library or not if not then why not and get it done and hopefully most of them would be there and then have a, a, a you know process circulated within your institution to how to utilize the resources available in natural national digital library and uh, let this be a, a very good resource that can be utilized to overcome the shortage of resources in the institutions right so uh, let me stop here and let me show some of these resources because uh, it is important that whatever we have discussed let's also because ICT is very very practical. So let us look. So I'll just go to Google and uh, say Sakshat portal. Right. So Sakshat, you can see here. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. <laughs> My yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, what can you see on the screen? Can you please read out? Department of Higher Education, Ministry of Education. Distance Education. learning. Excellent. So what? Yes, fine, fine. So please see here the brow. For more details, this is the URL that is mentioned in the slide also, right? Sakshat.ac.in. If I click on that, it will take me to a portal right so it is asking me to create a login right and create a login and login to this portal right and apart from that so here i need to register right and then start using the sakshat portal so what what let's let me go back to the department of higher education and go here so what that they have done they have done little bit of reorganization so what is happening is you can see here distance learning it is coming to sakshat portal come let's go back to the department of education now you can see here for higher education we click here you can see here how much of the national digital resources are there you can see here Swam Prabha that we spoke. Have you seen? Swam Prabha? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let yes, me sir. open it in a new tab. This is the Swam Prabha. The Swam Prabha has so many, uh, so many uh, resources linked here. We will, we will come back to it, but let me first go back. Let me first go back here and you can see here ICT initiative. Let me open again in a new tab. Then we have, uh, apart from that, technology enabled learning, university and higher education. Okay, just one minute. Give me. Right. So you can see here that uh, the relevant uh, notifications are also available here. We had a mission called National Mission in Education through ICT. We click on that. Now you can see here we have uh, all the in how many so so suppose you have you have a knowledge of a particular subject you want to create a digital resource and put them here so that it becomes part of the national digital resource that is quite possible so we have another site here called nme ict national mission in education through ict 
Now here we have National Digital Library of India that we spoke resource for that. Apart from that, there are so many national digital resources that are available and we have relevant notifications available, right? So I would request all the participants to kindly, kindly browse through these national digital resources and start using them one by one. Now, some of the resources I will like to demonstrate right away. For example, we have, uh, we have uh, the IGNO resources are available here through link here. Apart from that, NCRT resources are available here. NPTEL that we talked about are available here. So let me open the NPTEL. National Program and Technology Enabled Learning, right? So it has got uh, various uh, videos, live sessions. NPTEL hard disk can be acquired and then that can be put on the computer in the a, a server made available in the entire institution etc etc all of that is there so please browse through these uh, nptel uh, resources and these are all the institute you can see here 2.3 crores plus enrollment have happened they also conduct exams they offer moocs 5372 moocs have been completed so this is another one resource. The next that we spoke was virtual lab. So let me show you. This is the virtual lab. If you don't have lab, then uh, or if we want to enhance the learning of our students, we can go to virtual lab and the labs are available for so many subjects. Physical sciences, chemical sciences, biotechnology and biomedical engineering, etc., etc. And and let me just open any let me just open a computer science lab right so let me let me just open uh, uh, problem solving lab something like that now how nicely the the lab is designed what are the objectives of this lab what are the list of experiments what here are the experiments 10 experiments target audience ug students pg students post uh, and research scholars course alignment so this is aligned with courses such as introduction to data structure etc etc you can see here the experiments touch most of the to topic covered in the curriculum you know who can get benefited universities with computer science and it those kind of likewise you can see so let me go to the list of experiments and try to uh, perform open an experiment you can see here here is the problem here is the input output and everything is very well documented now what is the pretest so before you take the experiment you can do a small quiz to do self assessment then follow the procedure and then simulation so click here to perform the experiment then here you can write your program and then after writing the program you compile you run and then you save the output so believe me this is so nicely designed likewise and and then you can see if there is a this is not a program so it should give me compilation error if i click it will give me compilation error you can see here here are the compilation errors that is coming that this program is having error so believe me this is so directly don't see the solution first try it if they have difficulty then see the solution and this is the way the weak students can get benefited by each of these virtual experiments let me also showcase one more example other than computer science let me take a example of uh, other than computer science right so let me go back to the virtual lab homepage. Let me take biotechnology and biomedical engineering. Something like sir, that. Sir, what is Samarth here, sir? Samarth. Huh? Samarth. Samarth is actually an ERP. We will talk about it. Samarth. Uh, we will talk about it. This uh, this Samarth is actually a university uh, e-governance module, but it has got so many administrative stuff also apart from the uh, uh, courses, programs, etc. We will talk about it. Don't don't, don't worry. Okay. So let's 
come back to uh, so that's how the virtual let's say um, we were talking about virtual labs so biochemistry virtual lab so i now we are into a, another virtual lab called biochemistry obviously uh, each there are biochemistry virtual lab one has got these many objectives that means once we complete this lab these objectives should be fulfilled these are all obviously the learning objective to analyze qualitatively the presence of different types of carbohydrates in some unknown sample now how many experiments are there there are so many experiments who is the target audience btech be mtech in biotechnology pg phd research course in biotechnology what are the course alignments ug in biotechnology microbiology bio etc etc right now let me go back to the list of experiments and try to run one experiment right so here is the theory belonging to this experiment so theory can be read then what is the pre test i can take a, a quiz to know my level of conceptual clarity and understanding and then i come back to the procedure material required etc so it, because i am doing it virtually so i don't have physical material but i can do it uh, uh, simulation so here we go, go there you can see here the simulation is it visible yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you can see here yes, sir. excellent uh, uh, so in this way the learning process can happen since it is not my area so i'll not be able to explain the bio, bio uh, or uh, technology side of it but you can get a feel of how the actually the experiments were being run now here we are click and drag the centrifugal milk to pour okay so is it visible yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir right yes sir yes sir then i yes, I'm, i'm just reading from the right click and drag the distilled water so i'll click and it's sir sir digital ho raha hai to ha sab ho raha hai physical to mere paas kuch bhi nahi hai it's all digital right so <laughs> what i'm saying is the point i'm trying to emphasize is the procedure is written here what is needed is follow the procedure the results will be visible the student will visualize and then he will learn so before this experiment he had taken a pre test he had conceptual error after this he can again do the test this is the structured material very well designed very well prepared this will enhance the learning tremendously and another thing that i want to mention here is suppose you have some experiments that you believe should be part of the virtual lab a proposal can be submitted and ministry will evaluate and fund the project for your institution then you can you can uh, start getting fund develop that lab and then that lab will be included in the virtual lab so that is the beauty here we have lab feedback form lab assessment form faq sakshat portal so many things so please note that this is the kind of resources which are available which can be utilized and must be utilized now let me show the uh, what do you call swayam prabha right so here you can see here we have higher education school education competitive exams we have dta channel right so let me go to higher education now here in the higher education we have so many channels how many channels are there there are i guess 40 channels right now i so those channels each of them have a program schedule so let me see uh, let's say visual communicate let, let me choose the my subject computer science engineering and it related branches if i go to program schedule i can see here 
we so much of programs are being aired i can give my students a home assignment you go and watch this program and then after watching prepare a two page hand written summary of what you have learned and submit it as an assignment nobody will be able to do cheating because right now what is happening assignments are copied and everybody submits assignment same thing topoed and submitted we are not able to do what to we don't know what to do but if we give this kind of kind of an assignment everybody each of the student will be compelled to watch and prepare his learning submit it make sure that you ask them to do it in their own handwriting not by typing because in typing they can control c control v that should not happen so we will only accept handwritten but you watch these digital resources summarize your learning in two pages three pages key points and you submit it as an assignment each student should do it in his own handwriting even if he or she is copying she will be learning <laughs> so somehow you know you can have innovative means of giving assignments based on what you think relevant to the each category of a student and you can assign different assignments to different student group so that copies is not possible for example one two students can do on blockchain two students can do on java two students can do on machine learning etc etc so you can tell them that you know uh, we are having this so please do that and here the timings are mentioned that it is being telecasted at 8 this is being telecasted at 8:20 this is being telecasted at 8:44 so they can be at different times so this is the way we can give the assignment apart from that those items which have been which have been uh, already uh, air, aired they are also available in the archives and it can be export to csv export to excel and then it can be put in a notice or something like that you can see here and uh, current and then upcoming the future one right so, 7 10 so we can have like that so believe me there are so many national resources that can be blended into our own teaching learning process that will be making that will be creating a conducive environment for 21st century learning into our area. all that we have to do we have to identify appropriate resources blend them into our own process rather than using the traditional method we should use the knowledge method right now somebody asked about samarth samarth if you go to in fact you can uh, what you do is let me just go to the is it visible yes sir yes sir yes sir samarth yes, yes sir yes sir it's an e governance platform that ministry of education is asking all the universities to start using samarth it has got so many process automation of the university for example leave applications will be applied through samarth all programs students will be onboarded on samarth training and placement drive will be through samarth so most of you were uh, some of the participants were mentioning that there are a lot of work that teachers are doing the administrative work so those administrative works can be done through samarth to minimize the hassles minimize the manual work and to improve the efficiency that's all about samarth since it's uh, we are also using in in university uh, our own university for all the leave applications for for a few modules and it's in the process so additional modules are being added but uh, this samarth portal is it's actually a, a i can say it, it's a e governance suit for management of the university's administrative functions and uh, university's core functions right now with this i also want to show you one uh, lms that we have implemented in our university we spoke about you know one stop solution right so we have an lms this lms is actually moodle lms so
Let me just reset my password. Give me just one minute to reset the password and I'll log, log in. Is my screen visible? Yes, no, sir. 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 Just one minute. No, sir. Just give me one minute. Please. Dikha hai. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. No, yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Just a minute. I guess I'll have to drop out and join again. There seems to be some error. So give me one minute. I will just log out and log in again, right? So stay in the meeting room. I will join again. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Is my screen visible now? Yes. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, what, what, uh, what? Let me de demonstrate the uh, Moodle. Now, yes, sir. This is actually a dashboard of Moodle. So this is my dashboard, and. Uh, through this, I'll just showcase you. Now, here are the two courses currently yes, that no. are running for me. So, as a teacher, if I click on this dashboard, now you can see here, I have uh, uh, a dashboard. I can see these are all my courses. And I want to know who are all the participants in this course. 
if I click here, I get to see the my students list in this course. You can see here that I have just joined 12 seconds back, so it is showing me that this user has joined 12 seconds back. This particular student had logged in four days, 21 hours back, right? This particular student had logged in 11 days, 10 hours back. This student has logged in 25 days, 22 hours back. So if I'm giving assignment on the LMS portal and he or she is not logging in, then I can understand that this student needs to be. If I ask him, have you done the assignment? He'll say, yes, yes, sir, I have done it. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is he has not even logged in. So I know that this student needs to be <laughs> asked more questions, right? This student has. So understand that this is the kind of log available. I, I can give assignment here. I, I, here are my lecture slides. I've uploaded the lecture slides so a student can download and they can browse the lectures. You can see here the lecture slides are available. So I have handed over the slides on the portal and then they can refer the slides, etc. I found some, let's say I have some open educational resources that I want the students to watch. For example, if I tell them, if you want to know more about cloud computing, so he, he can, during his free time, watch a small YouTube video for him to get, I was mentioning about Galaxy, right? So similar small relevant OER can be mentioned that a student can attend. Then I can give assignment. You can see here, I have given assignment and out of that and, and assignment is for some X number of days. So. Uh, 14 uh, assignments was expected from 14, 12 have submitted. So two did not submit on that. Assignment is due. And it was 4th September, they were supposed to finish. So understand that all of that is possible. Then I can do grading, I can do many things. I can do quiz here itself. And for a student, when he logs in, giving students dashboard, and in the student's dashboard, you can see all the courses which are basically uh, available for that particular site. So likewise, I'm teaching another course on uh, database management system. So here I have given an assignment, but what I'm making sure that the students submit in their own handwriting so that copy paste can be avoided, right? So when the student submits the assignment, he will he will upload it. He doesn't have to come to me. He can upload and I can view after login in. And the topics as I teach, I upload this slide. So the student can download on his smartphone and he can, for example, on uh, 22nd of August, I uploaded this slide, Fundamentals of DBMS. And then students can view the content, additional references, etc., etc. So I'm, what all I'm saying is, so, the point of irregularity of the student can also be taken care of as long as he is logging in, as long as he is using the portal, he is not doing that. We can tell him in the class that you are not, uh, you have not even logged into LMS. How did you complete the site? When you logged in, what did you do? And they have a tick mark. Once they complete, they can put an automatically alert message to come. So, likewise, we, can, we have a number of resources that can help us reduce the problem or alleviate the problem and remind the problem that we have. So we have almost a uh, few minutes left for questions and answers if you have any. We still have not talked about the research part. So I'll also like to discuss a bit more about research. Um, uh, teaching learning resources we have seen, but we have to talk about research. Now, please help me understand any problems that you observe as research scholar or research supervisor? Because most resources we have addressed, national digital resources will have published papers etc. also. But what about the research supervision and research scholars problem? Anything you want to discuss, we can take it forward.
असाइनमेंट ओके वन वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन असाइनमेंट वो हैंड रिटर्न लिख के वो अपने डैशबोर्ड पे अपलोड कर देंगे आपको देना नहीं है वो अगर आपके पास एल पोर्टल नहीं है तो आप मेल पे मंगा सकते हैं हैंड रिटर्न लिख के स्कैन करें और आपको भेज दें जो भी आपका मेथड है व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप हो आपका या वो तो उससे ये फायदा होगा कि वो उससे ये फायदा होगा कि बच्चा जो है वो विल बी once he writes he will understand some part of it the point is we are trying to enable him to facilitate him to learn and enhance his knowledge and skill so hand written assignments are absolute must you should not accept typed assignment to say you write in your own hand writing so the the idea will be you know the hand writing of your student so he will be compelled by way of the process to enhance his learning when he is writing All instrumental facilities are not available at one place. Okay, so point is for lab instruments we can refer uh, the virtual labs. As far as the uh, Moodle is concerned, the, what we have seen the LMS portal is actually Moodle. So we can have Moodle on the cloud also. If you don't have, we, then you have a server. Where we have installed Moodle and set it up for so every teacher in AMU is entitled for a Moodle account. Every student in AMU is entitled for a Moodle account. So all teachers can upload their lectures, can have so when a student logs in the Moodle portal, he will find all the courses on his dashboard. When a teacher logs into his Moodle portal, he will see all the courses that he is teaching, and then it's a one-stop shop for all the interaction between teacher and student. for mentoring for for you know uh, enhancing through the knowledge model that we discuss in the slides for science subjects resources are not available in the college okay so what kind of resources you are looking forward to for example science related books will be available in the national digital library science related lectures are available in the nptel because NP iits do have science also they have they do phds in science so a number of experiments will be there apart from that there is another very important resource called moocs massive open online courses m o o c that you might have heard there are plenty of moocs we have not yet talked about international digital resources because international digital resources can all, all also be accessed very very easily without requiring a visa and passport right so what are those resources let us look majority of the good institutions across the globe have something called ocw so give me one minute let me show you mit open courseware ocw.mit.edu now we are we have arrived at a page which is offering mit which is words one of the best institutions across the globe they are offering open courseware which you can join which i can join which our students can join without any travel without any hassle so these are all the resources available you can see here there are so many open courseware available from mit not only that stanford open courseware uh, cambridge open courseware so international digital resources available in plenty swayam is our indian platform but there are so many international platforms where we have lot of courses available we can go here and search and find out for science let me go to inflipnet e p g p okay now we have arrived at the inflipnet website right for the epg patshala lots here are the subjects available we have how many subjects science we have plenty ah, you can see here for law 462 resources are available for home science let me take home science as an example 640 resources human rights and duties 364 commerce 469 biophysics let me open biophysics for example i have opened biophysics if i choose the paper bio crystallograph crystallography then i can use so many resources now i have pdf i can download this pdf refer this i have uh, 
self learning i can obviously i don't have time to go but i'm i'm i can tell you you go to epd patshala you will find lots and lots of resources once you you want to look more go to international digital resources like mit open courseware stanford open courseware go for you know berkeley open courseware and believe me these universities are creating knowledge and assets for example you might have you all of you are using google right Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know how Google was born? Yes, sir. Huh? There were two PhD students in one of the universities in US. They had made a small. They were doing research. One of the businessman came to meet their supervisor. So they were knowing that this businessman is very very rich, and they. wanted to show their project their work to this businessman so that they can uh, uh, get some funds for their research so when this fellow this businessman walked out of the chamber of his their phd supervisor between their chamber and car while walking they showed him the project on the laptop sir we have done this kind of a project we are building a search engine this that and this businessman was very very enterprising and uh, then they said sir can you help us with some funds he said sure why not and uh, then he took a checkbook from his car's dashboard signed a check of something like 2 million dollars and wrote pay google inc and he said here is the check so you need to in order to take the money you need to register a company and i have named the company and then he drove he gave the check and walked away and after a while google was registered and then those two guys started so i am telling knowledge is being created in the universities we should use these resources to make sure that we are able to contribute to the real world challenges and address the problems any questions because mostly we are running out of time i wanted to cover lot more but time is not permitting me so we'll have we'll reserve it for some other day if you have any questions relevant to what all we have discussed help me understand has it addressed some of the problems that we discussed in the beginning if sure, it has sir sir i guess so if it has addressed i am i i believe that i would require uh, assurance from you that you will start using it to some extent and i'm very special and we will meet some other day where we'll talk more about so many other digital resources and how icd can be used to solve the real world problems any questions another one minute then we i'll sign out i have one question yeah go ahead can we learn any software like spss mini tab through online mode and what is the website for that okay fine excellent uh let me show open the website i am just go to google and type spoken tutorial spoken tutorial the more you ask the more you will get because obviously time is limited so here we have a spoken tutorial as the website it's a fantastic website where you can learn so many things so go to spoken tutorial the beauty of spoken it's also again a national digital resource spoken hyphen tutorial.org which is right now visible on your screen plenty of resources available for learning things and good thing is it is also being localized which means you can some of the things will be available in local languages in hindi in malayalam in urdu in arabic in sanskrit in so many things and you can co co collaborate with them for for uh, 
um, localization if you want to also be part of the journey. Okay. So thanks for your time. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll have to close because time is not permitting me to proceed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. From all the departments, is you will use IT team respective institutions. As you will have some takeaway from this session, you will implement it on the ground because you are the task bearers and ambassadors for ICT in your respective institution after this session. Thank you, Lord. Wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you